Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. There's been some big news from the FDA regarding the potential for benzyl peroxide products to break down into benzene. In this video, I wanna go through this report and share my key takeaways. Now, the FDA has been responding to some concerns raised by groups such as Valisher about concerning levels of benzene found in benzyl peroxide products. And this issue is probably not related to contamination like we've seen with some other kinds of skincare products. This is an inherent fact of benzyl peroxide as a molecule. It has a potential, especially when exposed to heat, to break down into benzene. And benzene, of course, is a known human carcinogen. It's something that we want to avoid as much as possible in our lives. So the FDA, in response to these concerns, they tested 95 different products, acne products that contain benzyl peroxide, and to see whether or not they have any benzene in them. The first thing they found is the vast majority of these products, more than 90% of them, had no or insignificant levels of benzene present in them. So this is a reassuring finding that most of the products on the marketplace right now, the vast majority of them, don't have any meaningful levels of benzene in them. However, this means some products did have concerning levels of benzene that were identified. And in response to these FDA data, six product lines have issued voluntary recalls of their products. Another company based on its own testing also issued a recall. And I'll put these products up on the screen here and also in the comments below. Now, notably, this recall is happening at the retail level. That means they're asking stores to take these products off the shelves, but they're not specifically asking consumers to do anything. Now, if someone is a consumer who's using one of these products, I think the prudent thing to do would be to discard them and to switch to a different one. But one of the reasons that the FDA took this stance is that even the levels of benzene that were identified in these more concerning products are so low and the use period of these is limited enough and the exposure is limited enough that the FDA felt that the clinically meaningfulness of this risk, the likelihood that using these products is actually going to lead to the development of cancers is so low that it's not necessary to do that. And I think this aligns with a lot of the epidemiologic data we have that supports the overall safety of benzoyl peroxide containing products as a category and some of the thought experiments that I've gone through in other videos where if we even take some of the worst products that Ballisher or likely the FDA identified, the absolute amount in benzene in these products is unlikely to be a meaningful amount compared to, unfortunately, other exposures in our everyday lives. So overall, I think these results are relatively reassuring. The vast majority of products that the FDA tested had insignificant levels of benzene in them. In addition, the few products where there were concerns identified are going to get recalled and addressed. And additionally, the FDA's concerns were low enough that they didn't feel that this recall needed to happen at the consumer level. So that's another reassuring feature of what's going on here. Another important takeaway from this report is that we really should be able to achieve the goal of having insignificant levels of benzene in these products. As highlighted by these data, the vast majority of products are able to achieve this. And this suggests that that heterogeneity in the marketplace, we should be able to reduce that and make it so not just the vast majority, but all benzoyl peroxide containing products have an insignificant level of benzene. And as we and others have highlighted, much of this heterogeneity can potentially be explained by formulation, production, and distribution. And so if we take steps to avoid introduction of heat during these steps, we likely can maximize the safety of these products and ensure that all of them have insignificant levels of benzene. It will also be important for the FDA and manufacturers to continue to do their due diligence to ensure the safety of benzoyl peroxide products on the marketplace to make sure that none of them have potentially concerning levels of benzene in them. This is critical to maximize safety when using it and to ensure that we can feel confident about this foundational acne treatment. There's no direct alternative to benzoyl peroxide when it comes to treating acne. There's not some simple thing that we can switch to to replace it. In addition, if we're not using benzoyl peroxide, we really shouldn't be using topical antibiotics because of the risk of antibiotic resistance. And if we're not using either of these two treatments, that means more people are going to end up needing systemic or pill treatments like oral antibiotics, combined oral contraceptives, spironolactone, and isotretinoin or Accutane. And these treatments are going to have their own risks. So it's really critical that we maintain safe access and ability to safely use benzoyl peroxide. And again, overall, I think this report is very reassuring. The vast majority of products that the FDA looked at didn't have concerning levels of benzene in them. Products that did are now going to get addressed to make sure that that's not an issue going forward. And again, I think it is really critical that the FDA and manufacturers continue to stay vigilant about this issue so that when concerning products are identified, we can make sure to address them. So overall, I'm really thankful that we've been having this conversation about this issue over the past year. I think we've identified some best practices to improve 
the formulation, production, distribution of these products to minimize this risk. I think we've identified some best practices for those using benzoyl peroxide products, such as making sure that they're not exposed to heat because we know that heat can increase the rate of production of benzene in benzoyl peroxide products. So these should be stored at room temperature or cooler. We should be getting rid of old or expired products or those that have been exposed to high temperatures. We should be thoughtful about where we get these products from. If we're going to use online retailers to get these products, we should be thoughtful about how if they're sitting out on our porch on a hot weather for you know, hours or days, that might potentially contribute to the development and formation of benzene. So if we are gonna use online retailers for these products, we wanna make sure that they're not sitting in hot conditions outside of our homes while we're waiting to pick them up because that could potentially increase their risk. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Your support really means a lot to me. In addition, ask your questions about benzene and benzoyl peroxide in the comments below. Until next time, see ya.